My name is Jason, and this is Just Watches. All right, today we have a watch that has been lent into the channel by a friend, so thank you so much for that. This is the Orient Neptune, which used to be called the Orient Triton, and which is now, as far as I know, discontinued. It's been replaced by a strangely unnamed watch, at least on the Orient USA website, that is the same size with a similar dial layout and hands, but lacks the power reserve. Which to me is a real bummer. The power reserve on this watch adds a ton of character and is also reminiscent of the now long discontinued Orient Saturation Diver. The new f version just kind of feels boring in the Orient lineup with little other than its four o'clock crown and slightly larger size to differentiate itself. That's why I'm excited I got my hands on this watch, which I will be referring to as the Triton throughout the review. So as always, we're gonna be doing specifications, pros, cons, and then if I think this watch is worth the money. However, before we begin, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you're enjoying the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So the case is 43.5 millimeters in diameter. It's 51 millimeters lug to lug, but these end links do are proud of the watch case itself. So I would say the true lug to lug is about 53 millimeters. It's pretty thick, it's 14 millimeters thick. And then you have a 22 millimeter lug width here. Now, as for finishing, the case is all brushed along the top. It's high polish along the sides. And then there's a very slim chamfered edge between the two surfaces. On the right side, you have a four o'clock crown position with these very well integrated crown guards. And then the lugs are drilled, to, which helps with strap changes. The bracelet is what you expect on like a mid-tier Seiko Prospects. The three link style is all brushed. It's high polish on the sides. It starts at 22 millimeters and then tapers down to 20 millimeters before jumping back up to 22 millimeters on the clasp. You do have a diver's extension and then the clasp is signed with Orient. It has a safety catch and then double push to plant. Now the scissor is just pressed metal. However, you do get solid end links and the end link integration is very good. There's almost no play. Actually, there is no play between the end link and the case itself. And the finishing is super consistent between the case and the end link. Sizing is accomplished with the pin and collar system, which I do have a video if you struggle with, I'll pop up in the right corner. And then you do get four micro positions. Overall, the bracelet is really functional and comfortable. I just would probably have liked to see a milled clasp in this case that would have really taken this bracelet to the next level. So the screw in case back is gorgeous on this watch. I've handled a lot of other Orient divers and they have this, usually on the back there's two dolphins sort of swimming in a circle, but it's kind of barely etched into the case back and I could really take it or leave it. But this case back has a deeply etched, it's high polish Orient logo. And then there's a relief with a textured background to kind of make that high polish pop even more. And it's really thick. It's really like popping out of the case back there. Really nice, it really kind of elevates this watch. You can tell it's, they're aiming at a higher tier, a slightly higher tier than say like the Ray or the Mako. So I like what they did here with the case back. This does also help provide 200 meters of water resistance. And then as far as the movement, this watch also has a very nice movement. It's powered by the 40N5A. So this is a hacking hand winding 21,600 vibration per hour movement with the 40 hour power reserve. And it does show that power reserve as one of its complications. I was unable to find the stated accuracy, but we will get it on a time graph for later. And then it also features the date. Now this is the same movement that was used to power orient much more expensive, but now also discontinued saturation diver. So you're getting a really nice uh, decorated case back and then a really nice movement in this watch. So the seven millimeter screw down crown is signed with the Orient logo and then is nicely knurled. And then right there in the middle, there's an O-ring. I don't know if this actually serves any function, but it's definitely quirky and adds a lot of character to the watch overall. The one caveat on this watch is when the crown is deployed, there is quite a bit of crown wobble. I've heard mixed things about this, that it's a problem. And I've also heard that it's just designed this way. So if you've owned this watch for a long time, I love if you chime in and let me know if it became a problem over time or not. The crystal here is a completely flat sapphire crystal and it is treated with some AR coating and that does help with visibility of the dial. I'm really glad they use sapphire here. I almost always prefer it to regular mineral or hard lux just due to the fact that it's much harder to scratch. So the 120 click unidirectional bezel has a gold tone around the edge and then it's very easy to operate even under the camera here. The action is consistent throughout. It actually is very reminiscent of my the Orient Kamasu I had and everything thankfully lines up perfectly. And then the bezel insert on this one is aluminum. 
So the dial is a matte black and has a very interesting layout. You can see at the one o'clock position you have the power reserve indicator, and that does show you how many hours are left on the reserve of the watch. And then you can see the bottom section of that is gold to match the overall color scheme of the watch. And then at the six o'clock position, you have a lot of text. You have the Orient logo, Orient Automatic and Divers 200 meters. It's a little bit cramped down there, but I think that all that text does actually serve to counterbalance the power reserve on the top of the watch. And then you do have the date is just cut into the dial at that four o'clock position. And they did maintain some of the indice there. I do like that they maintain the indice. It just helps with the legibility of the dial. And then finally on the chapter ring, the chapter ring matches very well. And then you have dashes for each of the minutes with a slightly thicker dash for each of the hours. So the indices are applied and they're also edged in that same gold tone that matches the color scheme of the watch. And they are filled with loom. This watch has very powerful loom, which you will see in the loom shot shortly. And then the hands, I have probably my first major complaint on this watch. You have a nice, the hour hand is fine. It's this gold tone filled with a lot of loom arrow. And then you have a sword style minute hand, but that minute hand is very short. It's, and this is my pet peeve. I don't like short minute hands, but this one is objectively short. I think you will agree. It doesn't really reach that much farther than the hour hand and it doesn't reach anywhere near the chapter ring to kind of point to which minute it is. The second hand, ironically, is quite long and tipped with an arrow that is also well loomed and it's terminating, you can see, all the way out there at the chapter ring. So I just wish that minute hand was a bit longer. And then technically you have a fourth hand on this watch. You do have the hand for the power reserve, which is also well loomed, which you will see in the loom shot. So as you can see, we put it up against the Seiko King Samurai, and it's really going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The loom is bright, responsive, and it lasts a long time. So excellent loom on this Orient. So getting in on the time graph here, and unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be a great data point to represent this movement, the 40N5A. I know it's supposed to be a nicer movement than what you get in the Ray 2 or like the Kamasu, but on this particular watch, I'm getting some fluctuation in the rate and even some fluctuation in the beat air, which I'm not sure what that represents. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. Nevertheless, um, it is keeping okay time, you know, on the wrist day to day, um, but I'm just going to have to do some more research on this result on the time grapher. So here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. So this is a big watch for me. It's 51 millimeters lug to lug and then almost 44 millimeters across. I do wear the Seiko Samurai and I think I can pull this off. And I think you can pull this off if you have six and three quarters inch wrist. Just know this is a big watch. It has a lot of wrist presence. So if you're not really into that thing, it's probably too big for you. So pros and cons, starting with the pros, well, this watch has a lot of character. From the power reserve to the four o'clock crown with an O-ring in it, to the two-tone color scheme, this watch is just really fun. I'm honestly quite sad that they discontinued this and replaced it with something so boring. Second, you get a sapphire crystal, which I would really expect this this price point, so it's nice to see that that was included. And then third, you do get a good movement, albeit this one had a little bit of wavering in the rate and the beat error, but it's probably just an anomaly. I think this is a good movement overall. For cons, the bracelet is perfectly fine, but at this price point, it would have been great to see a milled clasp, especially in considering how well the solid end links are integrated. If this had a milled clasp, I think this bracelet would just be brought to the next level. Unfortunately, here you just have the pressed scissor. Second, the minute hand is too short, and I'm a stickler about this, but I think it's objectively too short in this case, and I would like to see it a bit longer. And then third, this isn't a con, but just a preference thing. This is a big watch with a lot of presence, and... For me, I already have the Samurai. That's probably my one big watch. So I don't know if I would have two really large watches like this because I just wear them in only certain situations. However, this is obviously going to come down to personal preference. So is this watch worth the money? Well, it's a little hard to gauge because these are getting trickier to find. They used to be for sale on Orient USA for just around $500, which is a tad steep for what you're getting in this watch, but I'm sure you could get them elsewhere for much less. I would compare this, it's competitive with the Seiko Samurai, and with the Sapphire Crystal, it's actually, I'd be comparing it to the King Samurai, despite the Orient only having an aluminum bezel insert. So currently on eBay, this watch goes for around $400, but I'm very curious what they used to be going for when these were more widely available. However, I think if you are in the market for a sub $500 diver, this is a pretty solid choice with a ton of character. Again, my only serious reservation is the crown wobble. I'd love to hear back from other Triton owners to see if that is an issue that got worse over time or is that just kind of how they designed the crown on this watch. So there you have it, the Orient Neptune, which used to be called the Orient Triton and which is now, I believe, discontinued. So what do you guys think about this watch? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, please subscribe. And if you like the content of this individual video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you have been watching Just Watches.